Let's get things rocking and rolling here again in the Mansfield Tavern, XFC 62. I mentioned, I probably mentioned it more than once, that there was one particularly mouth-watering fight tonight where both men are coming in undefeated. And when I mention that, I'm not talking about they picked up a victory in their debut. Respectively, 4-0 and and 3-0. and And that fight is now. Are you ready for your next fight? <laughs> Introducing first, Harry Christophanis. Making his walk out of the cage this time, up into the cage, Harry Christophus. 20 years old, fighting out of adrenaline, MMA and fitness under such notable fighters as Aiden Aguilera. Also, Matt Myers and coached by Chris Brown and Dom Shev. Absolutely, I am so excited to see this one. He almost ran to the cage, uh, almost ran into the um, referee. <laughs> kind of forgot that he had to take his shoes off and his shirt, but he's ready, ready to jump in that cage straight away. Being keen is being good. He is really feeling it. Yeah, Chris Brown, five-time Olympian as well. Judo, if my memory serves me right, five-time uh, Olympian. And he's just an angry-looking man, isn't he, Chris Brown? <laughs> Almost uh, with the uh, the shaved head with carries on, looks like a bit of a protege there. Yeah, it certainly does, but he was so calm and collected at the back when I was talking to him as well. So he said his fight camp has been awesome. He wants to become a full-time amateur fighter and then move into the pros and uh, if his career lets him go that way. But at 4-0, he's certainly got the movements. Definitely, yep. He's a blue belt in BJJ and quite a dedicated quite a significant striker as well. Introducing, Introducing his, his opponents, Brody Shirtai Maoki. And the young sensation, 17 years old, Brody Showtime Maiochi. Currently the world youth champion under the IMAP rules, comes into this with a 3-0 amateur record as well. A purple bout in BJJ. This is one promising superstar. One of these fighters is going to walk away with a loss on their record today. A lot of pressure on both lads to bring the A game because one of them, I'm sure they don't want that loss, mate. Yeah, fighting out of fusion, fighting fitness. Under coach is dad, Daryl, and his brother, Kyle. I know that he's looking to get a finish either in the first round or the second round, but that really doesn't care if it goes the whole way. So he's ready to bring everything. I yeah. feel sorry for the young lady sporting a mullet at 17 <laughs> years old. Dooms. 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 <laughs> like, we really are talking about the future of MMA right now. Now, I know that's the whole cliched commentator kind of script, but Brody Moyoki is something special. And, and he's not just special in MMA as well, but he's gone through an absolutely slaughtered the jiu-jitsu scene as a young kid as well he's probably won every single championship you could think of in terms of jiu-jitsu but he just craves that adrenaline that mma brings him well as far as jiu-jitsu goes you can't even get your blue belt until you're 16. so to then have a purple belt a year later that's incredible he's been tearing up the scene completely but both of these guys it's just as a clash of styles here. This next here. fight is an amateur lightweight fight. B class rules, three by three minute rounds. Introducing first, in the blue corner. Weighing in at 70.4 kilos. With an amateur record of four wins, no loss. Fighting out of adrenaline MMA, Harry Christophers! <laughs> and his opponents in the red corner. 
Weighing in at 70.4 kilos with an amateur record of three wins, no loss. Fighting out of fusion, fighting fitness, Brody Showtime Miyaki. And the referee for this fight is Peter Hippon. So just so you know, Bro Brody called out, do you want to touch gloves? Harry's like, no way. I'm expecting fire straight away. There you go. And they're into it. Straight into it. Yeah, almost a clash of heads, which would have been horrible. He's holding onto the pants there. Accidentally, though, I think. But uh, I tell you what, Harry, I want to see his birth certificate because this kid does not look 20. He looks 30 at, at the least. <laughs> Both of them are trying to see who wins the grappling game. Brody did a really good job getting that outside leg, but Harry was able to neutralize it by bringing his leg up and uh, untwining him. Brody's got the double underhooks, and Harry's overhooking both just to kind of limit that completely. Yeah, look at that head control too from Brody. Great cage control. Look at the head positioning. You're right, mate. That's very good. And Harry's making him work as well, though. So Harry's not staying idle. He's locking up the overhook and then punching him in the head just to make sure he knows. Ooh, almost sent him. Down he goes. Nice. All right, here we go. Really good uh, takedown defense from there from, uh, from Harry. He held off quite a few attempts. From uh, Brody, but um, again, that, that pedigree of jiu-jitsu that Brody brings to the table was able to uh, get the fight to the ground. Yeah, definitely. And uh, obviously from this point, the boys are going at it. And Brody's putting a huge amount of head pressure on before when he had his head on the chin. And Harry's doing a great job making Brody lift his head up. Oh, I'm our attempt. Throwing up an arm bar. Oh, oh it's got just clear. a oh, good reversal there. This is the Jiu Jitsu Masterclass right here and how to strike at the same time. That was super active hit by Harry, which gave him the opportunity to be able to get out from the side. Brody's he's got a he's got an arm in. No, not quite anything of, of note at that stage. Okay. Master guard, very good. He's Beautiful. on top now. So quick and he's gonna take the back. He's gonna take the back. Oh, he's gonna get one hook in. So got one hook in, two hooks in. He's got both he's hooks in. Yeah, nice. Now this is a hand fighting game. Harry has to be careful of the choke here and also try to escape and not get punched. He's doing, he's doing, Harry's doing a pretty good job making sure he peels away the right arm of Brody. Yeah, look at the hip movement from uh, Brody Mayoshi there. Moving his hips around, moving his legs around, and again, maintaining that position. Probably the spot that Harry doesn't want to be in. Every time he's been on the back or on the ground, he's been able to throw up a... A couple of submissions. Excellent control here by Brody. Oh, he's not under the chin yet. It's not under the chin just yet. But it's still... Oh, no, oh he's, nice he's, work he's able to by move Harry. It nice. Oh, good punch by Harry. What I'm, what I'm seeing here is it looks like Harry might be trying to switch, switch his hips here at the moment. He's loaded his hips up to the left-hand side. He's just waiting to get some control on that left hand. It looks like... Right, 10 but seconds left in the round. Let's see left. If he, he knows he's not going to be able to finish the round from there, so he just caused some damage from the bottom. Oh, that's tight. Hey, that bell. was so close. Harry Chris wow. straight onto his feet, over to his corner. What an incredible round. That was a hard round. There is so much here in regards to mind games fully going at it. Whilst, whilst, whilst Brody was on the back there for that last section, Harry was getting some very clean punches from the, from the back there. They were landing square on the snoz. And the reason he was able to do that is he was locking up the choking hand and that freed his right hand to be able to swing across. So yeah. using his left hand to grab the right hand and Harry was able to get some clean strikes there. Brody did a great job in terms of keeping his hip movement. A couple of times he did have his uh, legs crossed, but I think he was actually farming for something else. Now, having your legs crossed on a rear naked isn't the end of the world. You just got to push the head down in terms of not being able to explode the hips up. These guys are very experienced and they'd know that for sure. Yeah, second round, see if this is as good as this first one. Don't expect a glove touch at all. Nope. Straight, straight, straight into it again. Yep. Oh, it's a bit slower. Hey, sh good shot from Harry. Hands are clamped. See if he sends him. 
And the reason that uh, Brody hasn't gone for a ride right now is the fact that he got that left underhook in really quickly. And then he fought for the right underhook as well. That was really clever. Oh, nice reversal there by Brody. Great job. Remember, these two are some of the some of the premium lightweights in the country. Harry's not face though. Look at him. He's smiling. Whoop! Hey, sounds. That one snuck in a little bit. They are uh, the single leg entry into getting into low hit. Oh, really, mount. really quick nice movement mount. into mount. Nice. This is a very good spot for Brody. Yeah, and massive props for uh, both boys taking this fight. They uh, said, you know, both with undefeated records. Oh, he's on the back. He's really high on the back at this stage. Nice. Now, this could be something... I had shades of uh, the Brinkworth versus uh, Pink Panther just then. He's trying to wiggle his arm under the chin. But Harry's done a great job defending. Look at that mullet so close to touching the mat there. <laughs> he is butter boy. He'll get there. So one of the reasons that choke wasn't on. Oh, here oh, we go. It's on. It's on. It's on top That's now. close. Oh, no. no it's, it's not on it yet. Him. He's rolled. Oh, he's rolled. He's rolled nice. Out. Nice Work. defense. Yes. It's constant pressure from Brody, man. It must be exhausting for Harry, but Harry's showing lots of heart here. Not giving up at all. So there was a tactical error that Harry made before he let go of the hand um, in regards to um, like this now. He let go of that right hand, and that was one of the reasons why Brody was able to put that choke in really quickly. And some desperate defense by Harry was able to get out of it and keep alive in it. Yeah, I really like Harry's mongrel attitude there. He was he was copying a couple of shots from Brody, but uh, yeah, called it on. So what for? Harry's got such active feet on the um, heel of... Uh, oh, how quick was that? So quick, but wow. That was a beautiful transition from Harry there, but again, Brody's jiu-jitsu pedigree was just so quick to it. So the crowd's calling out for a face prank. Oh, again, that's on the mouth, a, that's but it still hurt, hurt your face. So much, so much pre uh, stress and pressure in the jaw there. These guys are putting on an absolute masterclass right now. Ten seconds left in the round, and we are where we were last time. Brody is not taking Harry lightly at all. How quick are these rounds going? They're very fast. By. We're enthralled by the action right now. Losing track of all time. And this is why we want five five minute rounds. <laughs> Both these boys are putting on an absolute showcase of skill. As we see here, there was that single leg entry into the lift to put Harry on his back in the second round. And just super slick transitions to be able to stay on his back. Brody is an absolute backpack right now. So Adam, what do you think uh, Harry's coach is telling him in the corner? Uh, I think it just be a bit more cautious of those takedowns and you've got to protect your back a bit more because it seems to be getting taken. It could be a hole, but maybe they can use that for something else as well. Matt, what do you reckon the keys to success are for Brody? Oh, again, he's, he's he hasn't had, well, I don't want to sound rude, but he hasn't had much success with that rear naked choke only because of Harry Kasafis' defense. You know, but that being said, you know, do you do you find your way back to that? Oh, Ooh, good wow. uppercut by Harry. Oh, you nice. know, does does, Harry, does Brody try and continue for that rear naked choke? Does he try and ride it out and win by a decision? Harry's talking to him. Oi! Let's just go for a front flip kick. <laughs> it's on the back again. See if we can get it this that time. That was absolutely, completely creative. Just throwing anything and everything at him. Yeah, Harry's got to do something here. We know uh, we know with Brody's control, he can sit here for the three minutes. I know Brody wants to finish, and I know Harry wants to finish as well. He doesn't want to go out this way. And I think that's one of the reasons why Harry did the call out, like, let's strike, let's go. And he threw that uppercut just at the start, hoping to uh, sneak out and uh, catch Brody snapping a little bit. Nice transition. Oh, just so quick just to uh, get jump back on his back. back. Yeah. 
He's going to use the cage to try and peel Brody off right now. Can't get on his back if there's a cage in the way. And again, talking about how fast this fight's gone, we're already a minute down in this third round. And this comes down to... Yeah, Harry's really got to challenge his, uh, his inner mongrel right now. He wants this fight. He wants it to go dirty. He needs to pull something out of oh, the bag. Nice oh, nice leg there roll. Go for a leg. Grammy roll. Unfortunately, this is only B class. He can't do up strikes to the head. Ooh. Wow, that up kick was close, wasn't it? Was it was close. That was. And I think there was also Shades of looking for a heel hook almost. So. Well, nice. Yeah, he had the leg entanglement there, but yeah, he lost I, it. I've been really impressed with Harry so far. Anytime he's had the chance to go for a, a submission or a, a highlight reel knockout, he's gone for it. It's wild in there. There is there, there's absolutely no hesitation in the way that he moves, strikes, and goes for anything. Certainly hooks. Speaking of no hesitation, how quick is Brody on his transitions? Have yeah. a go at the wrestling in this match. He's just phenomenal, him, isn't he? The wrestling in this match is phenomenal. 45 seconds to go. Down again. Daniel Granby. Leg, the leg's there. Is he going to get it? Yeah. Oh, on the feet. See if we can bang. So 30 yeah. seconds of chaos left. Can we see an upset? Oh, yeah, nice Harry, kick there by Harry. Harry needs to find a finish here. Oh, is that a headbutt? Another was, clash of heads there. Yeah. And Brody's doing a great job to staple himself at this stage. 13 seconds left. Brody's just grinding this win out right now. Wow. And Harry's still into him. Pops he's up not finished. Trash talking the whole way. He's not finished, mate. He's not finished. He wants another round. I reckon we give it to him. Give him one more. Peter Hickmont laying down the law right now to Harry. I think I can see these boys again in the future clashing. I only hope so. Here we see some of the uh, Granby rolls by Harry, and then that final ground and control pressure by Brody. His, yeah, Brody's nickname shouldn't be Showtime, it should be Wet Blanket, because he was all over it. Couldn't get him off. Any opportunity he had, he was on the back. Harry did an amazing job, though, surviving that whole time. Someone on your back. Impressive. I don't feel that Harry lost anything in that fight. There was quite a lot. He'll certainly get some fans. He went down to the wire yep. and constantly fought the whole way through. Yeah, good shots. Good clean shots to the face from someone on your back. Really great. Especially the creativity and striking shown by Harry. There's yep. so much in there. I'm really, really happy with the way that Brody composed himself as well. And we'll uh, go to Peter Hickmont uh, to make this official. This is the first one. The winner of this fight, by unanimous decision, 30-27. 30-27, 29 to the red corner, Brody Showtime, Miyoki! Here with your winner, Brody Milky, another 17 year old in the cage right now. Mate, uh, I'd make a joke about your age, but you're already bigger than me, and I'm a little intimidated right now, so I, I know my place. Mate, uh, this isn't actually the first time you've been in the XFC cage. Do you remember 2017? 
XFC Juniors as a 12 year old. You're in this cage and you got the stoppage that day. How much do you remember about that? The whole fight. Yeah. yeah. It was, um, went through the first round, second round, took him down armbar in the first minute 20. So as I said, the last time we saw you here, you're a 12 year old. You look phenomenal in there. What have you been doing the last five years, uh, which has led you up to this position right now? Oh, wrestling. Haven't done, only just started up MMA again in the last two years. Before that, couldn't get a fight. That was my last fight on this show. Then I had a three, four year gap. Had another fight, this time two years ago, and had a few more since then, two more since then. Mate, uh, as a 17 year old, I'm sure your next plans are probably to get your driver's license or something. Outside of that, what are your plans in terms of MMA or jiu-jitsu or anything combat sports related? Um, I was hoping for Worlds next year, but I'm not going to be 18 in time, so I've got to wait for the next year. Um, other than that, fight every eight weeks at least. And massive props to your um, opponent as well. He was 4-0. As a 17-year-old, you would tend to think, you know, your father, the, the coaches around you would try and find a, an easy path. But the fact that you took possibly one of the hardest opponents you get right now says a lot about what's going through your head and your, your mentality right now. I don't fight kids anymore, just adults. Daryl, can I grab you? Darryl. So we got uh, Daryl here. Mate, uh, obviously your son here, you got your other son over there, Kyle. Some pretty savage little sons. At what point as a father do you uh, hang up the boots and go into retirement yourself when their, their level starts matching yours? Yeah, that'll be pretty soon, I think. Like, they're definitely better to, uh, ready to move on and train at a really high-level gym and try and um, improve more, yeah. So I think we're getting there pretty soon. Yeah. Mate, it's a, it's a massive credit to yourself as well. As I, you know, living outside of a, a, a city like Brisbane, you uh, sacrifice a lot. Um, tell us a little bit about the sacrifices of, you know, flying down to a big city like Brisbane and uh, the amount of time and effort and money that you put into these boys. Yeah, uh, anyone else who does it knows what it's like. It's, it's um, very, yeah, costs a lot of money. But the last two years, we're lucky where we come from, small community, a lot of business have been getting behind us. And probably the last two years have been uh, really good. We can focus on training and uh, the business supports almost covering everything. Uh, the last couple of years have been amazing. Yeah. And uh, Kyle, last word from you. Uh, Brody, sorry. Who would you like to thank? Um, everyone that supports me, dad and the family. Um, Ryan Dunstan, Shane Kennedy, everyone that's come here to watch Flappy Bird, Jakaya, um, just everyone that's here supported me, everyone that's come down to watch and everyone who helps out at home sponsors us, gets us here, otherwise we wouldn't better do it. Mate, uh, congratulations, last thing I'm going to remind you, it is a school night, so go to bed.